Hi, this is Zach Mayer with the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Zach's Traders Cafe for uh, Tuesday, the 30th of July. Starting off with the FTSE, which after uh, having a little blip up towards the June peak, uh, just failed a few points below it, and we're back below not only that, but also the uh, May resistance line, so rather disappointing. 82.85 the line there, we're near to that, but uh, at least while we're above the 50-day moving average, 82.20, still looking for uh, a push to the upside, and best case scenario, is up to uh, 87.30 and uh, the top of that channel there from back in September. We do break down. We're hoping that uh, not only 82, uh, the 8200 area in the floor of that channel will hold, but uh, the worst case would be 80.70 again, the recent July bear trap low. Our site 57, so we're still above that uh, 55 resistance level in the indicator. So hopefully. This is just a minor pullback before a push to the upside, but we'd like to see the market close at least above the 50-day line at 82.20 or so. Moving on to the DAX, and here we're back within that rising trend channel from September. The level there around 18,300. Still looking for a break of 18,600 to take us up to the highs of the year. Big picture target. Maybe by the end of the summer towards 20,000, but uh, uh, at least that is on the cards while we hold above 18,000 post-June support. RSI at 50, which is uh, not helping us one way or the other. The Dow is next, and uh, here picture is consolidation above 40,000, which seems great. And uh, the longer we stay above that, the greater the chance of not only retesting July resistance through 41,000, but also heading up as high as 42,000 by the end of next month. On to uh, Bitcoin, uh, where I think there's been another attempt at uh, breaking through 70,000, which hasn't worked. Uh, here, uh, RSI is still at 57, so that's uh, relatively good news. The line in the sand here, the 50-day line at 63,300, and obviously the uh, line we want to break at 71,000, and that's in place from March. If we can get through that, then the chance of some uh, push towards 90,000 uh, later in the summer or going into the autumn could be on the cards, but the key here, as I said, is holding the 50-day line and really RSI 50 as well. Next up is gold, and uh, here the uh, picture has been uh, slightly complicated, but the good news is that we're staying on the right side of 2400. We're also st staying on the right side of the floor of the channel there, and the 50-day line at 2380. And uh, while that double notional support remains in place, we're looking for uh, a retest of the main uh, 2450 plus uh, record highs and then up to 2600 by the end of next month. The stocks are next and uh, starting off with a, an old name, uh, one which used to be uh, in the bulletin board here is a lot, but obviously you can see from the chart uh, not so much of late. But the current position is that uh, we've got this uh, hook or handle uh, breaking out through the uh, 0.25 level and uh, while we're above that looking for 0.45 perhaps as soon as the end of next month, end of August. And uh, it's also a case of uh, filling the gap there twice uh, over the last couple of weeks. So above 0.25, looking pretty well set for uh, 0.45 on Bolivan. Stock which is making its debut uh, today is uh, Celebrus uh, Technologies. And here breaking to the upside, a uh, nice uh, step fashion uh, um, progression over the recent past and uh, also pushing through to uh, through the 255 pence level of old resistance. While we're above that, looking for 312 pence at the top of that rising trend channel from back in August last year. Looks pretty smooth, that one, as compared to maybe other contenders. Situation which hasn't been quite so smooth in the recent past has been uh, Eco Atlantic, but uh, very bullish uh, RNS today, or a relatively bullish RNS today, but not get too excited. Uh, the technicals are bullish in the sense that we've had a bear trap rebound from below June, supported 11.4 pence, and bounced above the now rising 200 day moving average. That suggests that uh, the break of the 50 day line now at 12 and 3 quarter pence could take us up to 17 pence again by the end of next month. But the key here. Obviously, making no near term lows below 11 and a quarter pence. On to Gunsind, uh, which uh, has revived itself within a broadening triangle base. Uh, the top of the triangle there up to 0.25, and uh, looking for an end of day close above the 200 day moving average at 0.16 to deliver that target by the end of next month. Uh, as you can see from the chart, the shares haven't been above the 200 uh, day line for 
more than a year. So uh, touching that is actually quite significant. The only thing left, I suppose, is for, and we've actually already got it, is for the 50-day line to start rising. So hopefully we'll have another attempt on the 200-day line. Moving on to Helix Exploration, and here we're bouncing off the floor of that rising trend channel from May. And ideally, we see an end-of-day close above 22.5 pence today, above the rising 50-day moving average, to give us the prospect of a move to 30 pence plus by the end of next month at the top of that channel. Ideally, we stay on the right side of 20 pence in the meantime, but I suppose that is relatively obvious. On to uh, Kazira, and uh, here... The uh, picture is of one of a stock which is uh, uh, pushed up quite nicely off the four way rising trend channel base, or what we think it is, and uh, that's been in place since October. Above 0.4, basically now looking for up to 0.8 at the top of that channel. If you're cautious, you wait for an end of day close above the uh, 200 day line at 0.53, but uh, look, hoping that the bear trap rebound from below 0.42 is enough of a signal as is the uh, bullish divergence line there that I've just drawn now. So lower lows for the end of July, but higher RSI. Trace. Moving on to Pempetro, which was the uh, star of the show last week. And uh, here, just seeing how things are shaping up. Uh, with the highest was uh, around uh, 12 pence. Uh, we're looking for as much as 15 as a best, best case scenario target. Uh, current situation is that uh, ideally we stay above the previous target there, that uh, February uh, 2023 resistance line projection around 8.8 .8 pence. We can do that. Then we're still in the game for a move to 15 pence. Otherwise, there's the risk of filling the gap down to 7 pence before the shares finally rebound. The other point to note is that we are just uh, having a golden cross between the 50 and 200 day lines. So hopefully uh, when that uh, pushes through uh, over the next 24 hours, then that will provide an extra boost to the stock. But uh, 7 pence still uh, the buy on dip zone for people who missed the boat there. On to Plexus, where we were hoping for uh, the shares to break out of that 10-month uh, 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 falling wedge or 10-month triangle formation. We've broken above the 50-day uh, line around 13.8 pence and uh, hoping for a move up to as high as 26 pence by the end of September. Uh, but obviously at the moment, the initial target here, the 200-day line at 16 and 3 quarter pence back by that bullish divergence and the bear trap rebound from below the June support there at 13 pence. Ideally, we stay above that number. Quite excited about the next situation in the sense that it uh, looks like we've just got a, uh, a trend change or a trend line break. Uh, here we've got... Uh, Rosebank uh, with the rising trend channel there from back, uh, well, basically uh, earlier in the month. The floor of the channel here around uh, £7.35, and we've broken that line there from back uh, earlier this month. Above £7.35, looking for up to uh, £11.50 by the end of August, and it'd be very pleasing if the shares did that, especially given that uh, the charting is based on very little charting information at the moment. On to Red Rock Resources, which has been making attempts to turn around. Uh, here you can see that uh, we had that uh, bear trap gap reversal back in, uh, well, the end of June. And we had an attempt, a failed attempt to fill the gap down to uh, 0 0.04, which is a plus. Uh, all we're waiting for now, after hitting our initial target there at 0 0.07, is that uh, the shares remain above the 50-day line at 0 0.05, and then eventually head up to uh, the 0 0.1 pence area maybe by the end of next month. A lot of things need to happen there, but uh, the key here is staying above that 50-day line. On to Upland, where uh, I have to say it was touch and go whether the shares would uh, find support uh, at or just below the uh, one pence level. I did say in a previous uh, bulletin board heroes that uh, uh, sub uh, one pence was the bargain basement zone, but obviously as is often the case with these situations, when a stock actually gets there, you uh, tend to uh, lose your nerve. But uh, so far, we have had a nice rebound from the uh, sub one pence area. What we'd like to see now is an end of day close above 1.5 pence. That was uh, resistance on the way down, and we're a little bit below that now. But if we can get an end of day close above that, then it would be up to the old support line there, 1.95, the one that uh, should have been the support for the shares, and now that will become new resistance. So uh, everything in play there while we're above a uh, penny, then looking forward up to uh, 1.95 pence on Upland. 
Moving along to UCOG, where uh, I did suggest yesterday uh, that um, the 200-day uh, line would be a magnet for the price action. Uh, it has been not quite touched, in, I suppose, but the high 0.1225, and we were looking for 0.12, so uh, at least the target was hit there. Current situation is that we want to see the shares remain above the uh, 0 0.07 level, the low so far today, 0 0.075, so uh, that worked. And uh, at least at the minimum today, we hold, the good thing would be that we hold above 0 0.08 and then have another go at uh, testing that 200-day line at 0.125. We haven't been above that properly uh, for quite some time, I think back in uh, uh, the uh, 2022 area uh, for this particular situation, or maybe uh, before that. Moving on to the last three. First one is uh, totally, and uh, here you can see that uh, uh, it looks as though the shares basically have a sort of uh, saucer pattern, very sort of uh, jagged one, but we had an unfilled gap to the upside through the 50-day line in May, and uh, we never, never lo really looked back from that. Uh, wild swings in the share price, but uh, bouncing off a rising 50-day line. Initial target here, that line again, around uh, 11 and a quarter pence, and above that, looking for up to uh, 16 pence. Uh, perhaps the st stock will uh, be a winner in, on, as far as the uh, NHS gravy train is concerned. On to Vast, and a uh, stock which I wasn't expecting to cover uh, in a bullish way for quite some time, but or uh, if, if at all. Here we just had the first attempt to fill the gap up to 0.16, but we really need to see an end-of-day close above that to suggest that uh, the worst is over for the shares, and uh, obviously, uh, like Premier Africa, the company is uh, rather addicted to raising money finishing off in the balerics another uh, situation which is not uh, for widows and orphans but just the first sign here that we've got um, a bear trap rebound from below the uh, june early july resistance uh, support rather at 2.5 pence above that on an end of day close basis looking for the shares to hit 3.6 pence at the top of that rising trend channel base from back in may that's it for me today more updates tomorrow